Okay, I think we're going to start. I just want to tell you that this is like an awesome turnout today. <laughs> and I appreciate all you being here. Um, I'm Monica Della Maggiore, the person that's been, you know, emailing all of you and um, inviting you to come to this uh, great workshop that I believe you're going to go walk away from here with a lot of information you can bring back to your project groups. And then all of us can be contacted after the fact also, if, if need be. And I work with the California Poultry Federation. And some of you may have uh, been wondering, well, what the heck is the California Poultry Federation involved in 4-H for? Well, we, the, generally the, 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 uh, the Federation represents all of the producers in the state. So everybody from the large producers that you buy your chicken, your processed chicken from in the store, down to hobbyists, exhibitionists, and backyard flocks, okay? And um, I also run the National Pol Poultry Improvement Plan, if any of you are familiar with that. And it's been around since the 1930s, and it's a state, federal, and industry program, which is rare to have those uh, state and the federal governments involved in something like that, because industry has a say in how they want to run the program, and it's a disease preven prevention program. It started out initially to rid pylorum, pylorum from breeders, okay? And um, so they got that far, and now we have Oh, um, other diseases that are in the program. Not every disease is in the program, just uh, certain that would affect uh, viability of a commercial flock, the exports, uh, travel across straight st state lines in the United States. So um, it, it's an awesome program. We meet a few times a year and vote on the plans, and it's... Um, just a well, it's actually an internationally renowned program. So um, you have some good people. And I have created a team of speakers that uh, have been so kind to help us out. I work closely with UC Davis. Uh, we have a speaker from UC Riverside. And I, I usually work with other private vets that are, you know, are in the field with uh, commercial poultry uh, meat type birds and the egg layers. And they're a wealth of information, too. And at the end of the day, I'll give you our website information where there is a, a whole a, a link with a drop-down where you can go back and see past presentations, past uh, papers written by some of these people, notes. And they they write. It's not scientific. I mean, they, they we, we want this workshop to be for the audience. It's not like you're a bunch of PhDs out there. Um, Listening to everybody, so everybody, you know, they 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 write their presentation for the audience, which is good. So when I started this about 17 years ago, I did it running the MPIP. I was just doing it an hour and a half a week, and it has changed now uh, greatly in the past eight or nine years. When did AI start rearing its head again? Eight or nine years ago, and I'm doing it full full-time now, plus other duties in the office, but I do this full-time, and it's a lot of work. Um, I'm sure some of you have remembered the avian influenza, high-path avian influenza a few years ago that devastated uh, billions of birds in the mainly egg layers, in this, not necessarily our state. We did have a few outbreaks in California, but they were contained very quickly. Um, but in the uh, Midwest, a lot of egg layers, broilers, turkeys, they have to they have to control control it by dip, depopulating the flocks, and the federal government. I don't remember what is it was it umpteen billion dollars they spent on um, reimbursement. Help me out, guys. <laughs> Seven point two billion dollars, a one point two billion dollars eradicating and controlling avian influenza, and that is another reason that you're here today, because the California Poultry Federation receives a cooperative, cooperative agreement money, which is a, it's, not, it, it's similar to a grant, but it's not. And we, we receive that on a yearly basis for AI 
surveillance, outreach and education, and that's why you're here, um, because uh, a, a lot of uh, backyarders and hobbyists don't understand how a backyard flock can affect commercial industry. For instance, about um, 2010, E&D, 2010, 2011, down in Southern California, um, was started in a commercial operation because a person that worked at a company had his own birds in his backyard that was infected with exotic Newcastle disease, went to work, and that wiped out the, basically the entire egg laying industry in the southern part of the state. So um, we are concerned, the industry is concerned about all types of poultry out there, and so we try and educate everybody on biosecurity, health maintenance, when to report a sick bird, um, things like that. Uh, anyway, so one of my object objectives when I write my cooperative agreement is to reach out to different audiences, and 4-H uh, is one of them. So anyway, here, here we are. In fact, how many of you know Dr. Francine Bradley from the, only one? More of you must know Dr. Francine Bradley. She does all the youth, the quizzes at the, the bird shows. Well, if you haven't yet, you'll meet her. She was, is uh, retired from UC Davis, but was an eminent uh, avian veterinarian that re focused really on game fowl. That's what she's doing now. She focuses mainly on the game fowl industry and um, educating some of those audiences on biosecurity practices. Um, I want to thank Dr. Rodrigo Gallardo from UC Davis. He'll be speaking the vet med school, and I'm part, he's partnering with me on this, and he's the reason we're having the videotaping, because we will use this, this wonderful crew that's here today, will be, take all of this home, go back to the office, and work on it, and come up with a DVD, and it's gonna be used as an educational piece for those parts of the state. I have, don't have an infinite amount of money to do these workshops, nor does Rodrigo have an infinite amount of money, and Maurice Pateski. So um, it'll be used to send out to other 4-H uh, clubs in different parts of the state that we can't reach. I mean, I can't go up to Eureka and, spend, you know, it's just too costly. So we have to watch our dollars. So Maurice came up, I mean, uh, Rodrigo came up with this idea about videotaping it. And, it. and of course, you know, why wouldn't we? So that's why you filled out the consent form. No one's going to be in your face with the uh, the camera. It's just that you might end up during some of this on film. So we want to make sure you're all okay with uh, showing up on this DVD after the whole project's edited. Okay. And so on. What you have in the front of your table is the agenda for the day, that consent form. And I always hand out, and I'm sure you all are aware of this, but, uh, you know, uh, too many times, there's never enough um, reminders of some of these uh, issues that need to be addressed when you're working with poultry, especially with younger children, because they love to kiss their chicks, okay? So that... <laughs> and cuddle, and maybe bring them into bed, and things like that, which is really a no-no for all that, because I, I'm i sure, I don't know, you've probably worked with, you know, you educate your own project kids about, don't be cuddling and kissing your chicks, because there's a chance that you could come down with salmonella, and that CDC uh, is the, the government organization that really pushes that educational uh, message to everybody. So, um, okay, uh, I'm just like I said, I'm in awe. I mean, I, I've done a lot of these. A, a lot I do with just backyarders and small flock people. The 4 H groups, uh, the last one we did was in San Luis Obispo, and we had a good group, but this one is like, I don't know, another 50% more people here than in this gorgeous facility that Marlene Hokinson, who is works in the 4-H here in uh, San Joaquin County, is a longtime friend of me. She calls me my aunt, but I'm not. Um, she actually works with my husband, and she call, calls us her, her aunt and uncle, but um, I'm too young to be her aunt. <laughs> so I just want everybody to know this is a very casual 
casual day. So I expect that you will not be intimidated and that you will ask any questions that you have. I am a question asker. In fact, people sometimes tell me to shut up because I ask too many questions. But if you don't ask the questions, you don't gain the knowledge. And what you might have a question for, somebody over there is thinking the same thing. And if neither one of you ask, then no one knows. And our presenters don't have ESP, so they don't know what's, um, what to expect. So please feel free to ask questions. Some of the presenters may ask you to wait until the end of their presentation. Some of them, you know, might take questions during their presentation, okay? Um, so I am just going to give a quick run through on our state lab system. Have any of you ever used the CAVS lab? <laughs> My one person in the room that um, no one here has used the state CAVS lab in Davis or Sherlock. You have? Like sending birds? OK. OK. Uh, well. This is the go-to place to send. If you have any issues with your poultry and you don't know um, what's going on and you want necropsies done, I don't know if they charge the $20 for 4-H. Okay, it used to be free, but now it's $20 a uh, for two birds. Okay, so um, this is a PowerPoint presentation that I stole from a, a former director of the Turlock lab and he, 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 I didn't steal it, he knows I have it and he agreed that, he told me I could use it, so. Okay, so the mission of CAVS is to provide the citizens of California with the highest quality diagnostic laboratory support for surveillance and disease control, of which CPF, UC Davis are all major players in that, okay? Uh, public health, we don't want people getting sick from some of these animal diseases. Equine health, which doesn't include us, a health management of, of commodities ranging from swine, uh, poultry, dairy, livestock, food safety. They have their uh, egg quality assurance program. I don't know much about that, so if there's ever a need, I don't know if any of you sell eggs uh, or just do projects with eggs, but uh, CDFA is... Um, runs the, the uh, egg quality assurance program and anybody who sells eggs needs to get a permit from them and they have their own you can go on the website and find out all about that program and and then of course they provide information and publish studies and um, let everybody know what's going on with animal animals in the state okay so the labs are located from Davis at the north, down to San Bernardino in uh, south part of the state. Uh, you'll, you see there what they, the types of submissions they take. Turlock just takes avian. The majority of the birds in my program, which I have a small flock program also, that we go out and test for avian influenza and pylorum typhoid. Um, the majority of ours go to Turlock. But if there's a, some sort of test they can't do, they send it up to Davis. But I always recommend, if you have, uh, you know, birds you want necropsied, that uh, since Turlock does just focus on avian, they have a great group there, of veterinarians um, that that know what they're doing. And of course, all of our um, our commercial industry members send all of their sample, samples to these labs to get tested to monitor their, their, uh, their the health of their flock. So the labs are located in areas of the majority of the type of commodity there. So Turlock, we have a lot of uh, meat type birds and egg type uh, chickens and turkeys in the Turlock area and surrounding areas, Merced County, uh, Stanislaus County, San Joaquin County, Tulare, they have a, um, they focus a lot on the dairy testing where your milk quality assurance is. I mean, San, San Bernardino, sorry. Tulare has a brand new gorgeous lab that you'd want to move in if you visited there because it's a <laughs> high tech, um, beautiful place. Uh, hopefully in the next few years, 
there will be a new lab in the Turlock area. The Turlock lab is uh, from the 1950s, I believe, and uh, if you go, it's a series of buildings and that were just kind of stuck together to hold, you know, as their business increased. So, um, and Davis, of course, is the, um, the mother of all. Davis also is part of this Nolan um, laboratory network. network. It's a, a federal network, and they are uh, the only uh, lab in the state that is approved to do AI testing. So if there's an outbreak of sick birds that show up with a, let's say, even a, a you know, a low path, some sort of uh, AI, even if one's an infection, and it's a high path, they send samples to um, uh, Ames, no, to the, to the NBSL lab. Is that a name? Help me out, guys. That's in Ames, right? Um, and like the overnight samples, and they get uh, results right away because high path influenza will wipe out a facilla or ranch in a day or two. Okay, so they have to get the results back, and so that helps in the rapid uh, response to go in and take care of the problem and rapid recovery of the, that premises uh, to get get them back in business, really, because once there's an, a high path AI outbreak, then it's, it includes you know uh, trade embargoes to other countries and things. So it, even if influenza is um, a scary thing, hopefully it won't come back. But we did have we did have a couple instances that were that they were in isolated areas and so the state took care of it very quickly. So the specimens necessary for the diagnosis, um, I'm gonna just go through this really fast, is what they need. But I also it's also if you go on the CAVS website, they have a drop down menu for backyard flock submissions. And it tells you exactly how to well, here's their website. Just Google Cavs. That's what I do all the time. Um, it, it tells you how, what form to use, how to do it, how to pack up your samples, shipping. They need to be overnight. You don't freeze your birds if you're sending them in for any cropsies. You can drive them there also, but don't go in the front door. You, there's a special place that you, you drop off birds, uh, sick birds. So this is just, you know, a screenshot of their website. And that's an old submit. Th this is these pictures about two years old. So there's a submission form you would fill out: how to ship it, how to pack it. And this is the uh, just a picture of the new part of the new Tulare lab that uh, is opening down in uh, that area. Um, what I wanted to point out is they just do diagnoses. Okay, so. You can't use the lab as your private veterinarian. Just to let you know, they're not going to give you recommendations on medications, on um, disease prevention and treatment, but they can diagnose the problem and then you can find a veterinarian if you don't have one and work with them on uh, how to get rid of something you might have in your birds. Okay. Anyway, that's it. But that's the rundown. Call me about if you have any questions about the lab. Uh, and then if you can find this on their website, all the uh, branches are listed here with phone numbers and contact information. So take advantage. Take advantage of using the CAVS lab. Um, even if your birds aren't, you know, on their last legs, if you see something, you know, you can have a diagnosis made that that will verify maybe your suspicion. Do any of you have veterinarians that visit your, that you use on some of your projects? No? Where do you get your information from when it comes to disease? YouTube and Dr. Google? This is a much better source, okay? <laughs> and the UC Davis Poultry Extension has a wealth, a wealth. Does anybody ever go on there? Um, Dr. Maurice Pateski is our ex expert. Uh, these are all my go-to people, see. I'm just a lay person, so I, I um, rely on my experts to give the real information. But the 
that website, he sends you, he has recommendations where to send you. He started a list of veterinarians in certain areas throughout the state that will handle small flocks. Because a lot of you know small animal veterinarians don't do poultry. He is trying to recruit more of them to get into that. Because this whole snowball effect of backyard flock for you having know, birds, 4 H of course has always had a poultry division, but there's just so many uh, chickens and, and ducks in people's backyards now that are you know, they're getting their eggs from. Um, it, it's not stopping. <laughs> and I've only, I, in my program, I, I mean, I only have a, you know, a 0.0001% of the people in this state that have backyard flocks in my program. Maurice might have a few more than that that have signed, you know, in his census. And, but we know there's thousands and thousands and thousands more out there. Just, we just try and reach them as well, as best as we can. The purpose of NPIP and is for, and a lot of re, a reason that most of the 4-H groups do not really join NPIP is that the purpose of it is to ship eggs, hatching eggs and chicks across state lines because you need certain paperwork for that. Um, if you ever buy some of your replacement stock, you should buy that, that's from another state, you should buy that from an NPIP breeder. Okay, because they're testing for Pylorum, even influenza. Um, some of them might test for MGMS. So you're guaranteed if you buy from a, a multiplier, I mean, a, um, a parent flock that's in NP, NPIP, that your birds should be free of Pylorum, you know, typhoid Pylorum when, when you get it. And of course, AI, unless it, they pick it up somewhere along the way. But um, that's just a little plug on MPIP. So because you don't ship out of state, um, it's, you know, it would benefit a group to join, but it does cost a little bit of money, $100 a year. And we send people out that do the testing, do the, because we draw blood for the sampling. And, um, but if you're only in state, then, you know, you can call me with questions about some things if you have them, but, it, it, you know, you don't really need to spend the money. If you want to join NPIP, you email me. <laughs> and the program got so big and was getting out of hand. <laughs> so at first I was doing it by myself. Then I recruited Art from our office. He's down there, wave your hand, Art who has been a godsend for me because he manages the flocks in this uh, northern and southern California. The testing schedule, we test twice a year. Uh, your initial test would be Pylorum. That's mandatory to be even get in the program. I also uh, have avian influenza on there because it's I'm, the money I'm using from the USDA for this uh, is for avian influenza surveillance. So those are the two diseases we test for. No others. I mean, some people ask me, can you test for MG and MS? And I said, no. No, we don't do that. But um, you can do it on your own. You can send your birds on your own, but you'll probably find it. <laughs> and so uh, we don't, and it's hard to get rid of other than depopulating and letting your premises sit foul for six months or longer. Um, anyway, but NPIP, if you go to shows in other states, I'm not sure. A lot of states require a 9-3. That's the form if you're an MPIP member or a health certificate usually that you're testing for certain diseases 30 days before you bring those birds into other states. But I'm not quite sure. I didn't grow up in 4-H. I grew up a city girl in the Bay Area. So, um, but now I know more about chickens than I ever thought I would know about live chickens. <laughs> and um, I'm not sure if any 4-H groups go out of state with their birds. So it's a good idea to always question if you see something going on, what's going on with the health of my birds, you know, and do something about it, whether you have a vet or not. Not with Dr. Google. Go to Maurice's um, UC Poultry Extension. <laughs> he even takes phone calls and emails too, so uh, he can get you you know, in the right direction.
anyway, that's all I have to say about this part of it. So we're going to start with the regular program. And again, I thank you all for being here. I'm just thrilled.